Hello there everybody and welcome to a new video for Age of Wonders 4. In this one I got a new build for you which is utilizing the Chosen Destroyers trait. The wonderful part about it is it is also usable without the trait and it uses dragons, demons and a lot of chaos, maim and burning. So altogether it might be one of the most powerful builds that I've created for the barbarian culture so far. So yeah, enjoy yourself. You can use this totally if you're not going for Chosen Destroyers. The strategy part of this video will be focusing a lot about the gameplay when you're going for the Chosen Destroyers thing though. So let's get started. Timestamps are down below. Culture-wise, I went for runesmiths because this is very, very economic. Since Chosen Destroyers doesn't allow you any cities except for one, your income is pretty, pretty limited. So I went for that one because we do use a lot of unit enchantments for this build and runesmiths does help you to keep the costs there really, really low. Chosen Destroyers, if you are new to it, you can have only one city. Destroying other cities grants you permanent income and everybody hates you. End of the story. It's wonderful for uh, pure evil playfers. The Barbarian culture is really synergistic with the Chosen Destroyers and I really, really like that. Body trade wise, I went for spider mounts because spiders and barbarians are just so stupidly powerful. Wow. It's just such a good fit. It was before the Wyvern update already, and now it's even worse. And, uh, yeah, what can I say? So, the sneaky trait is the other thing we pick up. It gives you extra bonus on flanking attacks, and that's really, really nice, because we can get flanking really easily done. Because we're playing demons, we have access to gremlins, and gremlins and flanking is just a very, very natural synergy. That's pretty much it. I think you could go for other things, probably in the secondary trade, but I highly recommend you to stick to the spider mounts if you want to go for a chosen destroyer's trade and want to pick up the most bang for your buck. I think the Barbarians are stupidly synergistic with that one, and I guess that was intentional by the developers. Good. So let's get over to the Tome section. I went here initially for Pyromancy, because, you know, we're going for a Demon Chaos build, so that was very, very nice. It offers you Searing Blades and Fury Arrows as sources of extra damage, and this is really, really nice for your unit enchantments in general. The Lesser Magma Spirit and the Pyromancer offer you Battle Mage units you would lack otherwise in your base roster, and the wonderful part about the Pyromancers is they have a sweet AoE nuke. The Lesser Magma Spirits need to evolve to get access to that, but the wonderful part about this is Pyromancers, you can use them when you have gold available, and Magma Spirits, you can use them when you have enough mana available. Pretty neat. Ignite and Immolate give you nice battlefield nukes that I ended up using a lot with this build. The Ritual Pyre Special Province Improvement. The thing is, if you're playing Chosen Destroyers, most Special Province Improvements, you don't get the full synergy out of the um, adjacent province thing, but it is really good to have an extra mana income thing because that's one of your bottlenecks. So, Tome of Evocation was the second one to pick up because we already have Battle Mages. We want more battle mages, out of reasons that you'll understand later, and therefore I went for lightning focus, because I love to have that one. It's extra damage, without any downsides, and it also adds electrifying, so your battle mages also can deal damage over time now. On top of that, we gain access to lightning blades, which is another power-up for our melee units, which is really amazing, and we have access to the evokers, which happen to be also mounted nowadays, so they have that spider too, and the Lesser storm spirit, which is a shock unit if you ever need one. It's pretty cool, because your native shock units, the berserkers, are pretty hard to pick up, because tier 3 units, so these guys are available right from the get-go. Lightning Torrent I end up using almost never, but uh, in theory it is a nice nuke. The Channeling Tower, here again, it is sweet to have the ability to build another conduit and yeah, extra mana. We just need that so desperately with this build. In the Tier 2 realm, I went straight up for the Amplification Tome, because with Amplified Arrows, your 
Fury units just go bonkers. You deal so much damage with your archers because they have now flame arrows, amplified arrows, and that's all it takes to wreak havoc upon your enemies. On top of that, we gain Frenzying Focus, which makes our battle mages also stupidly powerful, and Astral Blood is a nice crit hit improver for our spellcasting. Amplify Minds, well, it is 20 knowledge in your build, that does matter. And Amplification Pylon, well, if you have the summoning spells or, or the you know, the combat casting points available, it surely can be useful. Here again, Resonance Fields gives you access to more mana. It will grow important because the later the game grows with a Chosen Destroyer's build, the more useless foresters and farms and all these other province improvements grow. So, the other tier 2 tome uh, to pick up is Mayhem. Several reasons speak for bad. Mark of Misfortune synergizes with our archers and our battle mages and our supporters and makes the enemy weaker, which is always good because we are really a very, very offense heavy build here. And we gain access to Summon Gremlin, which will be very important later for our demon economy. And Infectious Insanity is just stupidly powerful. It is one of the most most powerful crowd control spells in the tier 2 area because it is irresistible. You can slap that on a tier no, on a level 12 hero, and he will turn insane. And this gives you the ability to stall out extremely d uh, dangerous units that could nuke your army to pieces. This spell is amazing. And the rest of the book, well, Curse of Misfortune is pretty nice. You can add fumble chances in a 2x radius, never anything wrong about that. And so confusion, I think this is an underpowered siege project. There are so many better things, but hey, we got one. So, Let's head on over to tier 3. So once you get there, you have to decide whether to go for Pandemonium for first or Tome of Dragons. It is a difficult competition. Pandemonium synergizes much stronger with your Barbarian units, whereas Tome of Dragons opens up new venues for the late game. So we're going to go over Pandemonium first. So Havoc Mate magic is amazing due to the fact that you will run around with these battle mages and supporters quite a lot and mass hysteria is a really sweet negative status thing for an entire enemy banner if you aim it well and vessels of chaos is another nice damage amplifier i love that inside revolution gives you the ability to produce brigand camps which is really nice because that's a way to grind experience and other sources of income and since you will be at war a lot with this build, this spell's brutally powerful. The Chaos Eater, I end up not using him too much because he's not that much of a nuker. We have way more powerful frontline units, so with this build you can't totally ignore this guy. He, he has other um, builds to shine in. Okay, the other tier 3 tome, obviously, Tome of Dragons. Young Dragons are costly. They cost you a lot of gold initially and once they evolve into their uh, grown-up versions they will cost you even more so keep that in mind but apart from that they are among the most amazing units you could pick up for this build you also gain access to purifying flame which is finally a really massive healing spell it's costly but it cleanses a one hex radius and it's stupidly heal efficient. So really, really good stuff. Flamer focus is giving your mages another nuke, which is just insane. You will be able to rain down AOE so heavily with this build. And Draconian transformation is pretty neat because it gives your units natural regeneration, immunity to burning, and being a dra dragon unit type, they gain Draconic Rage, which makes them deal more damage when their HP are low. This is pretty good because your units are then, even if banged up, really, really effective. And if you'd like to, with the Wyvern Irie, you can hire new Wyverns, but most importantly, it's knowledge income. So, like I said, every little thing matters when you're a chosen destroyer. So, when we hit the tier 4 area, this is, interestingly enough, a new area where your build just starts to develop into a completely new direction. This is a very late game focused build. Because once you have access to this, you have access to dragons and demons. And 
these are completely new late game units. The problem just lies in the economy. You have Fight for Power, which allows you to pit two gremlins against each other to promote them. So pretty good if you have mana to spare. Demonic Summoning is one of the reasons why you should never destroy all of your free, free city vassals because you can get yourself cheap demons out of that. And Abyssal Flames is just a terrain nuker, lovely stuff if you need to soften up an enemy. And Sacrificial Slaughter is just amazing when you have heroes which can just summon stuff. I love this. And Demonkin, well, it's a little bit an odd one. You know, being Demonkin after that, I don't know if it's is this one i never checked are these oh yeah so you have to decide whether to go for draconian or demon kin because they're both major um racer transformations i don't think you need the demon kin after being dragon but choose for yourself what you like more the demon kin come also with immunity to burning and they give you frenzy but i didn't like that too much because we already have frenzy on our furies and on our battle mages via a unit enchantment it would only add it to your melee units and you could remove one unit enchantment to, serve, uh, to preserve mana so you see it is a matter of choice i'd say okay demon gate Bring that up because it's pretty neat to be able to recruit fiend units by using mana instead of um, gold. I really, really like that one. And Demonic Anthem, if you have the support heroes to, to, to have that, it's amazing because your armies gain so much longevity with that when fallen units turn into demons. That's really, really brutally good. And since we are knee-deep in the Chaos Realm, the other one to pick up will be Chaos Channeling. Choose for yourself which one you want to pick up first, because here again, it's really depending on your needs. Scion of Flame is really nice. We don't need a third source of immunity to burning, but Vengeful Flames is nice, Fire Resistance is nice, and Fury Wake is really cool once you are already immune against burning. Golden Horde, really cool stuff. We can just slap out a new army, fan the Inferno. Just really nice to um, set everybody on fire on the enemy side. Gremlin Ambushers is so good because it offers free gremlins when you're fighting in city terrain. When you're a chosen destroyer, you will be fighting most of the time in uh, city terrain. So this spell is bonkers. And Demonic Focus, well, it is not that super powerful for your battle mages because they, due to the frenzying upgrade, they already gain a lot of strengthening buffs, but this is healing for them. And healing, if I learned one thing, healing is never a bad thing. So, after that, the Tome of the Chaos Lord is where you head towards to. It gives you access to the Baylor unit, which is just... Yeah, your typical tier 5 unit. If you can't afford him, he's go just going to go nuts on the enemy. But uh, in all honesty, don't overestimate him. You have dragons, and I personally... Well, I personally prefer dragons over that one, but, uh, you know, it is up to you. Demonic Onslaught is really nice because it gives your units killing momentum, which is amazing. You get to act another time when you take down an enemy, and that gives your entire battlefield a completely new momentum. And, well, inside Rebellion, it is stupidly good to have mind-controlled enemies in that. It's just that. And the Avatar of Chaos thing, well... Since you are playing a dragon ruler, this is just stupidly powerful. So, yeah, as all tier 5 tomes, you know. But this one is really synergistic with what we're building here. Okay, so we're going to go now over the military roster. First of all, dragon. You know, your dragon is a one-man army, and you should totally play him like that. Feel free to conquer the world alone with that guy. If you want to, uh, you can also put him into your armies. It's up to you. And if you don't happen to own the dragon uh, DLC at all, you can, of course, just replace the Tome of the Dragon with something else and go just full-on into demons. Would work, too. The rest of the build is totally viable to pick that up. But let's talk about the rest of your military roster first. So, the Sundara is the unit that you will be only using early on, so build them with care. 
The warriors are the major backbone of your beginning army because they can stun, they can spit webs, and they are therefore everything you need. A few sunderers will be a necessary evil because otherwise your ranged department will be absolutely lacking. So once you have pyromancers though, focus them as your major source of range damage and get yourself to that tier 2 as quick as you can because the war shamans are really really important for this build have one in at least every banner because you need that healing you have so few ability such little opportunities to um you know, few opportunities to pick up healing so these guys are really really mandatory and the fury of course is your go-to archer and you want to have a couple of these at least once you have access to the tome of amplification these guys are nuts so the Berserker rounds up your roster by being a heavy charge unit. Like I said, if you need to, you can replace them with something summoned, but nothing beats down the Berserker. Their longevity, due to their um, Berserker's rage, they gain steadfast if they are about to die, is amazing. They deal lots of damage with this build, because you have a lot of crit gens and everything. So they are basically what you will pick up if you have to take down priority targets or heavily armored targets and the rest of the enemy shall fall victim to the endless swarm of bombardment by evokers, pyromancers and furies. Meanwhile your warriors will stand between the whole chaos and strategically stun every enemy that's needing a stun and if there is no target to stun they can support with webs. This build is stupidly powerful in so many ways because your entire roster, with exception of the Sundora, stays relevant through all of the stages of the game. The Sundora only doesn't stay relevant because he gets replaced by the Gremlin, which is just a much better version of himself. So you will not need the Sundoras anymore once you have Gremlins because they are just more powerful, more utility, more everything. So that's the only reason. But besides that, every one of these guys has a job in your late game roster and every one of these guys is stupidly powerful in his own regard the shamans have access to a lot of damage and due to the tomes we picked up they can debuff the enemy the furies have aoe ranged attacks due to amplified arrows like i said the warriors can stand out targets and the berserkers are just high pressure damage dealers once we get to tier 3 it even gets more vicious when, when we gain access to the dragons, which are something you need to foster, but their tail swipe is amazing. It cancels defense modes and retaliation attacks. These guys are flying, and the tail swipe deals a decent amount of damage. So put them into your banners and... Uh, and take good care until they are tier 5 but with every one of them you recruit be aware of the fact that with a chosen destroyers build you have to pay for them once they turn tier 5 and that's when they grow a lot more costly so should plan that ahead so to give you a, a quick glance of how i uh, arrange things here so these are my typical um late game banners here's a sundera that hasn't been replaced with a gremlin yet because he hasn't died yet they are the willing victims of the conquest here here a hero is lacking oh heroes that has something for a strategy part too so here you see two berserkers lots of battle mages and one war shaman and here we have a similar thing so i'm a little bit low on shield units in that one that is actually not ideal so ideally i would add in one or two more fighters into that so let's head on over to the strategy part which is heavily um focused around the chosen destroyers theme so at the beginning of the game your dragon ruler will be able to clear out your turf pretty much solo and it is a wise idea to grind them up to all the way to level 20 but after you got that you are better off with leveling up your heroes if you wonder how the hell you should get yourself heroes the thing is you are able to recruit more heroes than you have cities but the point is once you do that, you have to pay gold upkeep for these guys. Quite heavy gold upkeep. They also happen to be quite costly. So per hero, it's 30 gold, if I remember correctly. So 
it is nevertheless a necessary evil and I highly recommend you to have a couple of heroes, as many as you can afford. Once you ha have established yourself, uh, that means like two banners of army plus your dragon ruler um, being well fed on levels, it is a good idea to start destroying cities around you. Due to your chosen destroyer's perk, you will gain so much momentum out of that and the AI will roam around and rebuild those cities. It's pretty nice because as far as I have seen things, I didn't lose my income bonus after the city has been rebuilt. I'm not sure about that though, so please correct me in the comment section if I stand wrong here. And the other point that is worth pointing out, when you are roaming over the lands, this is a wonderful um, example of what I did here. Since we're playing barbarians, we have scouts that can build outposts and we have the affinities to build outposts pretty decently fast. So the point here is, here I grabbed a outpost with a wonder and I get the uh, entire income of that. Here I build an outpost with a magic material and a mono node and I get the income. And this is something uh, that you should do as a chosen destroyer as much as you can because every outpost does cost you 10 gold but you can acquire yourself the really really nice materials and if you happen to have a gold mine anywhere around basically the the outpost will pay for itself so the ideal spots are a gold mine right next to i don't know magic material or something i mean it doesn't happen too often but oh my game crashed excuse me so we have stated out the fact that this build is good enough to kill the entire game so there's not much more to say about outposts, so just try to be aware of the fact that they cost you gold and you need to decide if it's worth or not. The other thing that I already started to point out at the beginning of the video or during the tome section is you will need at least one or two vassal cities to help you out in creating demon armies. I mean, sure, you could just skip that out, but the point here is when you're playing Chosen Destroyer, you cannot vassalize cities after conquering them. You can only destroy them. You cannot produce free cities at all. So you have to work with those that are there. So therefore, choose wisely if you destroy all of the free cities around you. I personally think it is wiser to leave one of those. And after that, the most important thing is wage war and use the affinities to do so. Another thing I found very, very useful to point out when you're creating your dragon ruler, a shadow dragon is very, very good for this build out of the simple reason it gives you shadow affinity points, which gives you a quick access to knowledge extraction, which is still one of the most powerful knowledge gain tools in the game. Since we have only one city, this weighs a lot. This gives you a lot of knowledge gain per destroyed city, per fought war, however you want to see it. The other things here on the Chaos Tree are also very, very useful. We gain lower unit upkeep, we gain gold per kill unit, also very, very helpful. You can get free units here if you ever need that. The Rite of War is absolutely amazing as well. And Skilled Raiders is for this build truly, truly amazing since you will be on route a lot or on the road and therefore being able to just heal yourself during war is really really good and especially the late game things spoils of destruction which gives you extra gold per destroyed city or destined conquerors which gives you gold and mana per war you are involved in these things are important really really important for your longevity also the other option if you happen to get yourself some materium um affinity in there is uh, arcane artisans which is also very 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 powerful the point here is due to the fact that we play with runesmiths we have a little bit of a innate materium affinity going on for yourself so you build that up slowly but steadily also military engineering is really really amazing for this build as well because outposts outposts are therefore really cheap usable and effective and give you access to all those things that you usually wouldn't have 
all right apart from that well it really pays off to have a room of recall in your city not like me here not even building a wizard tower yet <laughs> and the other thing is due to the fact that you're not building any cities you have free access to as many empire development skills as you want and this is really really powerful when you're playing chosen destroyers because otherwise you wouldn't be that free in your choice with these things because cities do eat up a lot of imperium points you can use these for other projects here all right so i hope that helped you out giving you an idea about this one try this build out with or without chosen destroyers it is really really amazing i haven't gotten more bang out of my barbarians so far i think there is a little bit more room for optimization but then you would lose the dragons or the demons but yeah there's always something leave me your comments down below let me know what kind of other builds you'd like to see. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed and of course consider subscribing. I'd be delighted to have you. There's also a playlist link down there leading to all the other Age of Wonders 4 videos I did. And what's left to say except for have a wonderful day and see you soon.